bienvenidos, bienvenidos. Today I wanted to talk about letting go of las reglas, the kind in language learning. When I first went to Nicaragua, I didn't understand very much Spanish. Y cuando empecé understanding a little bit more of what people were saying, holy cow, I was, I could not understand. Why didn't people speak and write Spanish the way I learned in Spanish class? Because there's only way, one way to, uh, uh, right? Solo hay una manera of speaking Spanish and writing Spanish, right? Here I am, a very beginner Spanish speaker, wondering why native speakers just couldn't do it right. Probablemente, you already know, but just in case you don't, Spanish, like English, has many, many, many different dialects, dialects, accents, different slang, they slur their words together like we do. You don't say, do you want to go to the store and buy a loaf of bread? No. Do you want to go to the store and buy a loaf of bread? Anyway, after some initial resistance, you might call it, here are some cosas que aprendí to be comfortable with and just started doing myself, I guess, within the Spanish language. Morena. This is a word that I learned in Spanish class to mean brown hair. In Nicaragua, they use the word morena to mean dark-skinned girl. Or moreno, which would be the masculine form, would be dark-skinned boy. Usually, people who have dark skin tend to have dark hair, so it could also imply the dark hair, but it doesn't necessarily mean anything about hair. Number two, pantalones. O oh, pantalón because in Nicaragua they use pantalón for the word pants which really in English why do we even say pants why don't we say pant because we use pants in English I was taught to translate pants into pantalones but no pantalones is actually plural for pantalón which if you're saying if you want to directly translate I want a pair of pants from English to Spanish you would say, quiero un pantalón, one pant. Number three, when conjugating verbs in Spanish into the past tense of the you form, for example, the verb decir. This verb means to say or to tell. Dijiste means you said or you told. In Nicaragua, they like to add an S to the end of that form of the verb. So, dijiste instead of dijiste, and hablaste instead of hablaste, which means you talked. Usually they're taking letters off the ends of words, but in this case they add an S to the end. I don't know why, I just have noticed it in both writing and in speech. Number four, the, the letters B and V in Spanish, in Nicaragua, they tend to either mix up or they just use it kind of differently than what I learned. I was taught that the B is basically like a, an English B, but then the V is pronounced like V and B put together. It used to bug me so much to hear native Spanish speakers pronouncing their V exactly like the English letter B. So they'd say vacío, like literally moving their mouth in the way like they were saying a B. Number five, texting. Think to your texts or open up your phone and look at some of your texts. Do you use capital letters, periods, question marks, all proper punctuation when you're sending a text? Could I open all? So, it shouldn't have surprised me at all when I <laughs> was texting Tomas. Don't use their upside down question marks at the beginning of a question. Texting, it just, it just does not follow the same rules. Deja ir las reglas. Number six, seven, six, I think six. Words that, it's the same word in English and Spanish, just pronounced differently. These words, <laughs> they have been so uncomfortable for, to me, that, do, so uncomfortable that I can't even speak. They have been so uncomfortable to me, para hablar just because they're so different than what I'm used to. Here's a few examples. La palabra donut. Donut equals dona. 
you put the accent or the emphasis on the second syllable. One more example that I can think of, or actually, I'm referring to one of my blog posts right now, link down below, EnglishPortFavor.com. Check it out. The word pitcher, like pitcher as in a baseball pitcher, like the guy who pitches the ball. Pitcher equals pitcher. Obviously, I'm not the perfectest at pronunciating these words <laughs> because I'm not a native Spanish speaker. Any word like this where it's pretty much the same in English as Spanish, it just feels so awkward and weird to... Maybe I should try. Eso es todo. I... I'm sure there's more things. If you could think of any, comment below. I would be very interested to hear your opinion, your thoughts. My question to you and to myself is do you want to sound like a native cuando hablas español? If the answer is yes, then obviously you have to make these changes whether you're comfortable with them or not. Hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed this video. I obviously enjoyed filming it a little bit. Overtired, I would say. And I hope to see you in the next one. Adios! Spanish words with the letter V.